By the end of this lecture, I'd like you to be able to use a basic search pattern to interpret a chest radiograph, explain and apply the silhouette sign, and identify basic vascular anatomy in the chest. There are many different approaches for a search pattern, but here is my approach. I generally start inside out with the carina as one of my main landmarks. Look at the trachea to the carina and upper mediastinum. Then I look at the heart size and the borders. I move to the lung bases and move up to the right lung, down the left lung, and then look both lungs at the same time. Finally, I look at the bones, soft tissue, and the abdomen. When looking at our radiograph, one of the most important concepts to understand is the silhouette sign. Remember that a radiograph is a two-dimensional projection of density of a three-dimensional object. White is more dense and dark is less dense. Here are the four basic densities of radiograph, air, soft tissue, bone, and metal. As it is a projectional image, an interface of two separate densities will result in an edge. For example, the clavicle next to a fat, an aerated lung next to diaphragm, a pulmonary artery, and the heart borders. When a part of the lung is filled with pus, blood, or water instead of air, there will no longer be a density difference between the lung and the adjacent tissue, so you'll lose that normal edge. Loss of these normal edges is called the silhouette sign. The silhouette sign with a three-dimensional understanding of thoracic anatomy will help you localize findings on a chest radiograph, especially in the AP plane. To demonstrate the silhouette sign, here is a virtual radiograph reconstructed from a CT chest without contrast. On the right side of the screen, you see the three orthogonal planes of the CT with crosshairs over a right middle lobe pneumonia. Notice how this pneumonia manifests on the virtual radiograph by making indistinct the right heart border. Compare this image to the last image of a normal radiograph. Here is an example of a real radiograph showing the silhouette sign of the right heart border. Another way of saying that is a consolidation obscures the right heart border. The right heart is an interior structure, so you can be relatively confident to say that the opacity is in the anterior right lung, in the right middle lobe, rather than the posterior lung. The lateral radiograph confirms this with a wedge-shaped opacity. The patient also got a CT, which shows the pneumonia in another modality. Here are some examples. Remember, the name of the game is what don't you see? The right heart border, left hemidiaphragm, left heart, mediastinum, and left hemidiaphragm. Moving on to vascular anatomy. In order to read a radiograph, you need to have a good anatomical knowledge of vascular anatomy in the chest, specifically venous anatomy. Pause the video, and from memory, draw the venous vascular return to the heart with the starting points provided. The subclavian and jugular veins both confluence to brachiocephalic veins, which form the superior vena cava, which empties directly into the right atrium. Don't forget about the azagus from posterior. Inferiorly, the hepatic veins join the IVC to empty into the right atrium. Here I made a 3D rendering from a chest CT with contrast after injecting contrast via the right arm. From this, I made a virtual radiograph of that study to highlight the same vascular anatomy on chest radiograph. A normal radiograph is on the right for comparison. Notice the little Lego man in the corner to show you the position of the image. In this radiograph, notice the right subclavian vein, brachiocephalic vein, superior vena cava, caveoatrial junction, and the right heart. The caveoatrial junction is one of the most important landmarks and one of the most reliable locations will be approximately two vertebral bodies below the carina. Here is another virtual radiograph from a CT chest with contrast, but injected from the left. This shows the left subclavian, internal jugular, brachiocephalic vein, and SVC. If you understand the basic concepts of these radiographs, you can use your anatomy knowledge with the fact that this is a projectional image to localize any pathology or lines and tubes. Here are examples of how different patient positioning will affect the image of a radiograph. Pay particular attention to rib orientation. We have left shoulder anterior, right shoulder anterior, lordotic position, and kyphotic position. Finally, I wanted to introduce the concept of the secondary pulmonary lobule. This concept is fundamental to understanding and interpreting lung CTs. 
The lobule is the smallest unit of lung separated by connective tissue. The center contains the artery and the terminal bronchiole, and the periphery contains lymphatics and the veins. Note that they all come together at the proximal end of the lobule. The lobule itself contains 12 or so asini, each of which contain many alveoli. Diving into this concept is beyond the scope of this lecture, but I want you to be familiar with it as you start looking at chest CTs. Thank you.